Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and I am live at Sage Transform 2020, and my guest today is Brian Wilton. Brian is the Vice President at LBMC Technology. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Brian. Thanks, Ed. I'm really glad to be here. It's a great conference, great weather, and it's nice to see so many people in person again, so after a few years of not having much. My my line has been, it's good to be seen, not just viewed. Exactly. Could not agree more. (laughs) Well, Brian, why do you do what you do? Uh, That's a good question. I think, you know, I've been doing this 26 years. I think looking back uh, overall, I really enjoy helping businesses get better at what they do. And so, you know, our success is based on our customers' success. And when our customers are successful, then we are successful. And so, you know, yeah, we take money for what we do, and we have to take money for the software and pay the publishers. But I think overall, people, uh, they, they see value in that. And it's not, uh, it's not a commodity. It's an investment. And I think, you know, I take a lot of pride in, in just watching businesses be successful with the changes that they're making in technology. And one of the things that we talked about before we started recording was is that you really feel that that cloud has exploded in the last decade or so, especially with regard to ERP. First of all, why do you think it is? Why did it take such a long time? And where do you think it's going in the future? Yeah, I think it has changed. You know, 20 years ago, there were cloud offerings out there, but uh, people just looked at them, businesses looked at them like they were not real and not really valuable. And I think it's taken a while for business owners and C-level folks to really see that this really is the right thing to do for their business and to get out of the server market, get out of the, you know, software updates and all the costs that go along with that, that they really are seeing big returns on it. And so, you know, I think we're all excited. We do a lot of cloud work. I mean, most of our business is cloud-related. And, uh, you know, 26 years ago, it was all on-prem, and we never, ever thought that it would be cloud at all. And and I think a lot of partners that help customers with their ERP offerings, I think a lot of partners were not on board with it for many years, and they felt like it was taking money out of their pockets and could not be farther from the truth. It's totally opposite because, you know, we're able to help people change their business and not deal so much with setting up servers and installing software and stuff that's really, looking back, has just been a waste of time and money for decades. And so, what was that question? So No, so, and, and are you even seeing a shift oh, yeah. um, uh, w- with regard to, like, for, for example, um, people just maybe getting rid of their accounting department and just bringing the stuff to, to a, a, a CAS practice? Uh, we do see some of that, um, and, and we have a sister company that does a little bit of that. Um, I think one thing that's changed uh, that mentality of kind of offloading that to others and the whole cloud, the, the bigger cloud discussion, Ed, is really um, a transition of a lot of uh, people, you know, maybe in our age group, if you will, that are moving into retirement and moving out of the finance office, and we see a lot of younger people coming in, and those younger folks, they grew up in a cloud world, you know. I mean, they don't they don't know about this whole on-prem uh, decades that we've had. And so as we see people transition uh, to a younger finance group, they are all about cloud. And so I think that's it's part of the overall cloud discussion. It's also part of the offloading, uh, the, the accounting function to other partners, people that do that. And that's all they do. And so they've become very proficient at it. They have top-notch systems. They can do it, in many cases, cheaper than a company can do it themselves internally. Well, before we started recording, we were having a conversation with another colleague of ours, and he described you as the best salesperson that he's ever seen with regard to ERP. And what I want to ask you is, what what do you do to make that happen? Are you someone who really focuses on trying to understand the value to the customer? Is that something that you do? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that that gentleman might have had a couple of glasses of, of wine already, <laughs> but but assuming he he didn't, um, you know, I think that's part of it. Is people don't like to be sold to. People like to buy value, and 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 companies that are running around out there just trying to push product or push solutions without understanding the real business needs. I think that's really the differentiator for LBMC. Is 
we, we have to understand how we can help these folks. We're not just selling a product. We're selling change, and we're selling vision, and and we're, we're selling the future. We're going to use a product to do that and to make that happen, but it's not many cases about the product itself. It's about where the company can go with the tools that they're going to acquire. And so I think that's a large part of it. That's a large part of my success personally is I'm a CPA background, so much like yourself. And so, you know, uh, I learned in public accounting that um, you have to learn the business before you can help people. You have to understand the business. And, And if you don't, then you're really of no value. I'd like you to react to this statement. Customers don't care about your costs. You never walk into a Starbucks and think, I hope they've got their costs covered. They always want your price to be lower. But value is one of the... This, the, this, uh, it's the only of those three that you are on the same side with the customer. You both want to maximize the value. What are some of the things that you do to try to maximize that value conversation piece? Yeah, I think that's a great question and so true and even more true today. As the years go by, it becomes more evident that it's really not about the cost of the solution, whatever it is. It's really about the value because if you do it right and you really have the right solution for your buyer, for your customer, your future client, it's really about the value. That's what people will buy into. And if there's value there, if there's return on the money they're going to spend, people will spend any amount of money if there's a return, right? It doesn't matter how much it costs. If I can get that back, you and I are the same way in our consumer world. We we will spend whatever we want or whatever we, we need to to get the value. And so I think, you know, that's part of the success of, of being in this business today is selling that value and helping the customer see the value. And, and sometimes that's work, right? And that's why some people don't want to do it. They're in for the quick sale. Sell them something, get it deployed, and move on. And we're... We're really in for customers for life, and if we don't get that value right, we're not going to have that customer forever, and that's what we're after. I always tell people that are buying, and I've trained our sales team, we we do not want to be seen as a vendor. There's a lot of people out there that can be your vendor. We want to be your partner and a partner for life, and that starts with that value conversation. And, Brian, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? Uh, you know, there's so many that come to mind. Um, you know, I'm at the wrong conference to talk about Apple so much, but Steve Jobs really uh, was was certainly in that top category. Um, I think the one thing that he did right, instead of build a product and then try to sell it, he asked people, what would you want? What would you use? What makes your life easier? How do you adopt new technology with ease? And once he figured that out, then he went and built the product. And I'll never forget that. And lastly, Brian, how can somebody get a hold of you? Uh, They can reach me uh, 24-7, almost literally, at Brian, B-R-Y-A-N dot Wilton, W-I-L-T-O-N, at L-B-M-C, like Larry, Boy, Mary, Charlie, that's not what those letters stand for, dot com. Or uh, my cell phone, 713-628-7128. I never shut that off, literally, ever shut that off. (laughs) All right. Brian Wilton, Vice President at LBMC Technology, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Ed. Glad to be here. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.